faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. You never change. You never fail, oh God. True are your promises. True are your promises. Father, thank you so much for this morning, and thank you for giving us all the opportunity to come here this morning and to gather together. Lord, we thank you so much for your faithfulness, and thank you so much for all of the great things that you've done for us. Lord, we ask that you please be with us as we hear your words and help us to keep us op keep open minds and open hearts to receive your message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. sorrows I'm trading my shame I'm laying them down for the joy of Trading. 
on the curse for us, promise where the door is yours. Greet your neighbor. Good morning. I want to welcome you to Memorial United Methodist. My name is Joe Cade. I'm the pastor here. I want to, uh, we're so grateful when you join us in worship. If you're a visitor, that you have a bulletin that gives you all the information, not only for this worship service, but for the week. We've got a number of things that we want to share with you this morning before we begin worship. And um, uh, I need you to hang in there and pay attention to all of them. Uh, Ryan Jones, I know it's crazy for me to say your name. Can you come up here? Yeah, I'm not going to make you say anything. The Memorial Store is open, and it closes tomorrow night. Okay? Here's an example of something you can get at the Memorial Store. Okay? And I love it. I love these wearing a lovely words of the worship. This is another thing you can get at the Memorial Store. A pullover like this is another thing that you can get at the Memorial Store. If you want to wear what the minister wears on Sunday morning, <laughs> just like an NFL jersey, you can do it. I wear that on Fridays. Thank you. Um, appreciate you coming up. It closes tomorrow. A lot of people said, hey, when's the store going to open up again? And we open up, put it out there, but we, as long as we keep it open is as long until it comes back. As soon as we close it, it'll be back here in two and a half weeks. So make sure you notice that. If you need any help in um, ordering, you can um, ask Leanna Morris and she'll help you. Um, turn to the registration panel for uh, something I want to point out to you. Today is Big Hug Sunday. It's a tradition that we have here where uh, the children come around to different adult Sunday school classes. Some of them will give you hugs, some of them will stand over in the corner, and some of them will give you fist bumps. And you do the thing that you want as well. We want to make sure that um, we respect both sides' uh, 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 wishes. If you go to the middle, you've got the, uh, what's coming tonight with adults on Sunday nights. Children meet tonight, and uh, youth do not meet tonight because they are going snow tubing. There is one uh, wild card in snow tubing that we got a notice about this morning that the place we were planning to go is closed due to warm weather. And so we are um, reaching out to another place. Katie's got that lined up and um, you wanna make sure that you come over to her after 11 o'clock and make sure that um, we've got that all lined up and ready to go. We think that's going to work. Today is the last day to sign up for Wednesday dinner. You see that the third thing on the panel, make sure you sign up, it helps us helps Leslie do what she's trying to do to make sure that we have food, uh, make sure we have enough for you. This is new um, this week. I want to thank Leanna and Leslie for making this happen. We've had traditionally memorials and honorariums and donations and the people they gave them to and who they gave them to in the bulletin. That was when the bulletin was about 10 pages long and it was a beast to create and print. I'm telling you I'm committed to a simple and beautiful lean bulletin, but I'm also committed to giving you the information that you would like. This will be printed on the second Sunday of every month. For the last two months, you'll see. And so if you miss it the time we put it out there, it will be out there again and you'll see that month one more time. It's also going to be in the email the week that it's printed in worship. So the prayer list is printed in the back, though you can find it digitally. This is printed in the back and you can find it digitally as well. Two things on the prayer list that we do not have on there that have happened since then is Caitlin, our um, lead uh, band member, has the flu today. Uh, so we want to think about her and her family. And um, if you're not aware, you may have heard it already, Miss Martha Bennett's husband 
passed away this week, um, the director of the Greer Soup Kitchen. Uh, so you want to um, have uh, her family in mind as well. So you find those in the back of each worship service. Uh, prayer list every week. Donations on the second one. I'm going to call Thomas Simmons up. Thomas is the chair of our long-range planning committee. He's going to tell you something that they're going to do. And while he's coming, I'll tell you, if you are going on the men's trip, uh, you need to get your money in this week. Steve Barbie wanted to make sure that you knew that. And uh, I think I did it. I did the memorial store already because I saw Ryan over there. Uh, right there. Good morning. My name is Thomas Simmons. Um, I'm speaking this morning on behalf of our lo church's long range planning committee. Um, the committee was formed late last this past summer <clears throat> with the objective of gauging the church's current and future needs um, as well as making sure all our foundation pieces are in place to move forward into the future seamlessly. Uh, there, there are many uh, pieces that go into this, um, projected church growth, community impact, um, facilities needs, and so on. But the most important piece of this puzzle is the feedback we get from you guys, our congregation. So in the coming weeks, um, we're going to be soliciting feedback through a survey to each group of Memorial. This will allow us to get really good insight, I think, into each subset of Memorial. Um, if you are not in a class or group other than the 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. service, at a later date, we're going to announce a way um, to provide individual feedback. Um, and if, so if you have any questions about what we're doing or just want to learn more about the committee, please feel free to contact me or Joe, and we'll answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. You'll find that you are in, say, the choir and a Sunday school class and something else. Each of your groups will get one, and you as an individual need to think about that particular group that you're in, not the last thing uh, that you filled out. If the snow tubing trip happens, there will be no youth. If this group calls us and says we're having trouble, there will be youth. I'm going to say that. Just watch out for your email if you are a youth parent. All right, I'm going to call Aaron Knight up. Today is Aaron's last day with us this morning and this evening, and Cindy Miller is our SPRC chair. So there are a number of um, digital things that we have in terms of our roster, in terms of things with the access system, in terms of processes that we communicate with you that all happen because Aaron and I spent a great deal of time doing it. The prayer group, if you, the prayer garden, if you go on the outside, is there because of Aaron's expertise and passion, Miss Carolinda Robinson's uh, donation. The children are uh, sang deep, thoughtful, pretty songs, as Aaron was the children's director. And the children did everything that we did in worship. They amplified in Sunday school with Aaron as the director. She built sets. She made plays. Uh, she did as much as she could possibly do with four hats that we gave her in the beginning. Lots of stuff that she was doing and so we have a presentation for her uh, that is the prayer garden picture and I want y'all to say thank you for her efforts. So it's got, if you can um, hold it up and go like this. <laughs> it's got a picture of the prayer garden, and it says, With our greatest appreciation, we hereby present Aaron Knight for your innovative ideas, years of service, and guidance at Memorial. And um, I want to thank Leslie for making sure that that frame uh, happened. So I think that really captures it, um, your time here, and um, uh, we're really grateful for it. And we're going to miss you. Thank you. I'm going to miss you all, too, so much. Mm -hmm. But I'll be back to this. So we're going to celebrate Erin at 11 o'clock as well, and you have got a chance this morning, and she'll be here tonight um, if you want to speak to her. Y'all got all that? Everything we're doing? Okay. 
Lots of stuff, lots of fun stuff. Uh, make sure if you're in that area that you pay attention to the thing uh, that we said. Let's pray together. <coughs> Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the people in our lives that truly change us, that change our point of view, that help us do something better, that share their passion. And we pray for Aaron and her family in the transition. We say thank you for the opportunity that she has before her to work not only with children, but with nature as well. We say thank you for the time that she spent, the dedication that she gave us. We pray, Lord, for the people in our community, in our church, that are experiencing loss or sickness. We know that both things have no bearing on your love for us, but they're great opportunities for us to show our love for the ones that are suffering. Give us purpose, Lord. Give us peace that we may share it with those who are ill or hurting. As we close the Sermon on the Mount today, as we see the final things that Jesus said to that massive crowd in that amazing place, we pray, Lord, that you will help us as we weather a storm, as we make important measurements, as we protect our valuables that you have given us. Give us focus, give us purpose in this service, Lord. Give us inspiration as we pray the prayer your son taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our opening image today is fireworks. Who didn't like fireworks? My dog. My dog hates fireworks. All dogs hate fireworks. They hate New Year's Eve. They hate July 4th. But most everybody else likes fireworks. So let's look at the um, picture for the day. Whether it's New Year's Eve, July 4th, the beginning or the end of a sporting event or concert, when we see those fireworks, when we know they're coming, when we don't know they're coming, usually they're pretty fun. You know, there are times when you are toting a large family, you're taking a big group of people, very different ages, on very uneven ground to go and watch a fireworks show. And when it starts and you've settled in, you finally made it, there's an excitement to the start of it. There's a little bit of a lull in most fireworks shows if they're going a long time and you go, yeah, okay. I guess we're still watching the fireworks show. And then there's something where just more are coming. You think, oh, I think this is a big finish. A couple reactions to the big uh, Just taking it in. Just this is an amazing time to be here. I love seeing fireworks, and I'm just taking in this fun opportunity. Sometimes when you see the end of the fireworks, you start reaching for your keys. You want to make sure that you got everything because it is time to go. It took us everything we had to even get here and see these fireworks. Sometimes joy or sadness of a child, you see a child's face as they get bigger and bigger, or you see the fear on a child's face as they get bigger and bigger. Point is, there are lots of different reactions when you see that end. Jesus had these people who were on that hill, on the water, who went to substantial effort to be there and hear what would be called the Sermon on the Mount. They didn't know that at the time. He said, attention folks, this is going to be Matthew chapters 5 through 7. This is the Sermon on the Mount. It's amazing. No, he just started teaching them. Eighty years later, the author of the Gospel of Matthew took to, looked at Mark more than likely, wrote this story down, and framed it in the way of the Old Testament and the law. Because Matthew, more than anyone, wants to tie this Gospel to the ancient people and the ancient texts. So the story that we're reading today is the big finale, is the fireworks, is the thing that draws the whole thing together. And I'm guessing the people in that crowd are no different than any crowd. Some of them are thinking, 
oh, it feels like he's wrapping up. Where are my keys? There are people who are thinking, wow, I can't believe that I've heard this. There are people who've got some sort of distraction. And there are people thinking, I hope this will never end. That's um, the feel for the end of the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way that you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother or sister's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your eye? How can you say to your brother or sister, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove a speck from your brother or sister's eye. So your next fill in the blank is making important measurements. Now, there's different phases of your life where you are excellent at making important measurements, and there are instances in which you have no idea. You do not want me measuring anything with construction. You don't want that happening. You don't necessarily want me measuring anything in the kitchen and what's going to happen there, but you do want me measuring something that's going to be on a screen, something that's going to be in an email, something that's going to be on social media, whatever it is, something that's in this worship space. I, can get, I get that. I understand that. And I know y'all are different. What's the thing that you really can measure that we want you to measure this thing? What's the thing you want? No, nothing to do with when you're measuring it. Now, he uses a metaphor. In so many cases, and closes with a metaphor today, he starts with building a house. And so, what measurements would this house be making? What measurements would this church be making? And we've got a number of facilities, a number of those facilities are done. Of course, Thomas and Long Range Planning, they'll be thinking about what are we going to do. But we don't spend a ton of time talking about measurements of the physical space of this campus. I tell you what we're measuring all the time, what we're recalibrating all the time, is who will I love and how will I love? Measurements of the way that you treat people, the way you treat people in this church, people you don't know very well, people you do know very well, people you know very well that are annoying to you, people you know the very well that you love to see, people that you have seen 1,000 times, but I don't know their name, I don't know who they are. Whatever that is, wherever you are on the continuum, who will I love and how will I love? He says, love your neighbors. It's easy to love your neighbors. In chapters 5 through 7, he's setting the tone in the Sermon on the Mount, and he says, anybody can love the people right beside them. He says, I need you to elevate the way you feel about that and extend it beyond the people that you know and love to your enemies. Of course, there are people outside of our nation that we consider our enemies. There are people inside our nation that we consider our enemies. There are channels that dedicate their entire lives to displaying all the moronic behavior of the people that we would think are our enemies on both sides. Jesus would elevate the way that you treat people, think about people, speak about people that are not the same as you. Another part of the Sermon on the Mount is eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. At the time that eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth came out, it was a measure to withdraw from violence. It was a measure to hold down violence of people against one another. Because someone would accidentally or on purpose take someone else's eye and it would escalate very quickly to arm or leg or whatever it is. And they said, no, 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 no. If you make a mistake, all you can do is take the exact same thing from that person. If you on purpose take this thing from this person, the maximum amount you can take from that other person is what was there. It was a measure to hold people back. L long tested, long held before Jesus. And Jesus says to these people, you people that know the law, Matthew, the author of this gospel who's gathering all this information is saying to his readers who are Jewish, you people, you know the law, you know eye for an eye, you know tooth for a tooth. Let's elevate that. 
let's, let's, let's raise it up a level and not ask for the exact thing that you just lost. You know how hard it is to do that? Somebody cuts in front of you at the security line at the airport. Somebody has 12 items at the grocery store in the 10 line. Somebody doesn't have their form and you did everything to have your form. These little things all the way up to very big things. This person took my account. They knew what I was going to do and they undercut me. To elevate yourselves above the notion of taking what was taken from you. He doesn't just say it and then live somewhere in a tower. He says it and he lives it. So when we're making important measurements, a lot of the measurements that we make are based on fairness. And our sense of fairness is just a little bit skewed by the things that we want and the people that we love. Would you, would, would you concede that? Just a little bit skewed by the things that we want and the people that we love. He says, when you're making measurements as to who's do what, remember what I gave you and elevate your expectations. Verse 6 says, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet, turn and tear you to pieces. Well, what are those precious things? The next phrase is protecting our valuables. So we do a lot to protect the valuable things to us. Okay? I don't have a big safe with a bunch of valuables in it. I don't keep much in my truck. I really don't have much that's valuable. But I'll tell you the thing that I do that I totally get this. Is I have this insane app on my phone. Most apps cost you 99 cents. $1.99, $2.99, right, maximum. I paid $25 for an app. And that app is called 1Password. You remember 1Password. And it will generate these insane long passwords for everything. And you just go and copy and paste and paste that password into this. So if Yahoo Mail or ESPN or the school district or Google, whoever says, hey, uh, Facebook, uh, we gave your password to everybody. Sorry. Sorry about that. Delta says, hey, um, that password, that email that you give to everyone, and that password that you use for everything, yeah, we gave that away a little bit. And anybody anywhere can give it away. So for $25, I just have to remember that one password. And the only people that don't like it are staff members, church staff, when they say, hey, what's the password for whatever? <laughs> It's this crazy long thing with symbols and all sorts of stuff. It says protect it. You got to protect it, whatever it is, whatever is valuable to you. Now, every one of us has things that are um, physically and digitally, emotionally valuable to us. What's he talking about? What valuables is he describing? In my opinion, it's his name. In my opinion, it's his reputation. If you go and you wear a memorial shirt, you have a memorial t-shirt, you have a memorial sticker, people know that you've gone to memorial for 40 years and you mistreat someone in a boardroom, you are throwing pearls to pigs. You wear all that stuff, you claim this church's name, you claim the word Christian, you sit at a bar and you just dog someone out to another person. You're in a restaurant with 12 other people and you are just tearing someone apart, you are taking the pearls that is Jesus' name, that is Memorial's name, that is the word Christian, and throwing them away. So he says the measurements that you make, the valuables that we have, when someone angers you with whatever behavior that they have, if you take that name and you do something terrible with it and you engage them back, he says, you're throwing pearls to pigs. He says, you're the light of the world in the Sermon on the Mount. The light of the world. That means the world cannot see unless you are putting that light out there. There's the stairwell and the parsonage from the garage up to the uh, den. If the light bulb goes out, you're talking about pitch black. If 
the light bulb goes out and it's pitch black and someone has left a soccer ball or a volleyball or a tee ball or their shoes or their socks or their socks and their shoes or their folder or their book bag, you know, just for instance, <laughs> and the light's out, trouble. And just the, uh, you've got, uh, just for example, 14 bags of groceries because you only want to make one trip. But somebody hears you come upstairs, they open the door, you see the light, you can see where you're going. It's as simple and it's as real as can be. He says, you are the light of the world. You have an opportunity, he's saying to these people. Verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. So your next blank is weathering the storms. Notice that it happens to both. In fact, I would guess there will be more storms, more difficulty, more challenges if you choose to follow what's in this Sermon on the Mount. I'm saying this to the people who were on that shore, the people who read it 80 years later who were thinking about joining the Christian church, people in 2019 who are reading it now in church. If you choose to try to live this way, life will not get easier because you will be faced with opportunities that are the easy thing to do to throw the pearls in the mud, get down there with them. You will be challenged to go places that you would not have gone before when we ask you to do things. You'll be challenged to do things in the community that you may not have done before. And those things will push you beyond what you thought you were capable of doing. Living this way will not make life easier. And there's um, one of three things leaders do with the word crisis. Some leaders create a crisis, either on purpose or they don't have any skill set. They create a crisis as a distraction from the fact that they cannot lead. I'm guessing you've seen this on very small levels in supervision in your workplace. There are times when students in classrooms will create an environment of distraction out of fear that they don't know how to do the thing that we're talking about. And they create it in order to throw everything sideways. I'm guessing you've experienced this. Some leaders panic in a crisis. They're great if it's 68 degrees and it's sunny outside and we've got plenty of money and plenty of people. But man, if one of those things gets sideways, I don't know what to do and I don't know where to go and I don't know where to be. You might have been that person in a situation. I've been that person in a situation before. Hopefully we've grown from it. You might have been led by a person in that situation and you had to do something that you did not want to do because that leader put you in that place because they don't know how to handle a crisis. And then finally, there's leaders that navigate in a crisis. Because when things get crazy, when things get weird, when things get hard, they do less. They get down to the core of what they are and they do the thing that they do the best. They remember uh, all the stuff that we made that was bigger or brighter or faster or stronger or whatever. We're going to get back to the thing that we do. When he says the winds blew, the streams rose, the rain came, 
He says, if those things happen to you and you are trying to live this life, you'll go back to the core of what we've learned and you'll be able to live this life. If you haven't been paying attention to me in this moment, if you think I'm dumb in this moment, Jesus is saying, if you don't retain after this moment and you don't study, you could create a crisis, you could panic in one. A great deal of the Christian life goes with understanding, living, and believing in this Sermon on the Mount material no matter what's happening in your life. So in this big finish, he tells them, don't judge other people. The measurement that you use for them will be measured for you. He says, don't get down in the mud with people. Tell me these things aren't immediately relevant right now in something that you're dealing with. He says, build your house on the rock, which is the faith and the belief and the words that I'm giving you. So here's your last question. Can I love my enemy? Doesn't it boil down to that? When are you most likely to think, say, or do the most hateful things? When are you most likely to try to undermine? When are you most likely to try to uh, turn something over and create a crisis in a storm? When are you least likely to be able to navigate a storm? Is when fear and anger and hatred are the fuel that are, fuels that are driving you. When are you most likely able to navigate that? When you listen to these words and you put them into practice. And we've read this for three weeks, but I encourage you to go back this week and just look at it one more time. What are the items in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus said, if I'm going to preach a sermon, if I'm going to set the tone for my ministry, what am I going to say? Love your enemies. Love your neighbors alike. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's now, uh, nope. If y'all stand and join me uh, with the modern affirmation. <laughs> People asked me about last week. That was me. <laughs> so we're clear. That was me. Okay. Remember these words and put them into practice. Away from this campus, as you say, people to people, you are Christian, that you go to memorial. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of God fulfilled. We believe in the Holy Spirit, as a divine presence in our lives, reminding us always of the truth of Christ, our inspiration and strength in times of joy and sorrow. We believe our faith should be apparent in our words of love and acts of service, that the kingdom of God may be a present reality here on earth. You may be seated. <coughs> it's now time for our offering. Uh, you can give, as the plate goes by, you can give electronically with instructions in the bulletin. And if you're a guest today, uh, it's not our expectation that you give immediately. You can rely on the generosity of our people. Our God is a consuming fire. A burning holy flame with glory and freedom. Our God is the only righteous judge, ruling over us with kindness and wisdom. We will keep our eyes on you. We will keep our eyes on you. A mighty fortress is our God. A sacred refuge is your name. Your 
stop for a minute as we do something that we've done in the past when someone is departing. I'm going to ask Aaron to come in the middle. Those of you who are closest to Aaron, if you'll lay your hands on her and those who are on the outside of those people, if you'll lay your hands on them and all the way back to the back. Simon says. Gracious and loving God, we know Erin loves nature, and she's been able to work with nature. We know she loves children, and she's been able to work with children. And now as she goes to Lake Conesty, we know she gets to work with nature and children, and for that we are grateful. Bless her in the transition, bless her in the journey, bless her in the opportunity. And Lord, help us to remember the things that she offered us, the things that we now pick up and carry for this church. It's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.